What if we could see our faults? What if we could physically take a look at what goes on in our minds? Once an honor reserved to neuroscientists, it might be a reality in the future thanks to a company called Kernel. So Kernel is a company that is developing non-invasive brain-computer interfaces, that is, a different kind of brain-computer interface with respect to, for example, what Neuralink is working on, which is an invasive brain-computer interface that requires brain surgery, but Kernel is instead working on this kind of helmets. Specifically, it's working on two wearable helmets that are called Kernel Flux and Kernel Flow. They work on different physical principles, but overall the purpose is the same, to look at the human brain activity. Last year Kernel presented in detail the Flow system, and you can also check my other video for an overview of the company and to learn more about Kernel Flow. This year in March Kernel in fact releases some updates, releases some more technical information about its devices, so finally we can take a look more in detail at Kernel Flux. And in addition to Kernel Flux, we also learn about something quite interesting that the company is working on. So starting from Kernel Flux, Kernel Flux, it's a system that is called Optically Pumped Magnetoencephalography System, which is, I know, a bit of a mouthful, but let me explain exactly what it is in a few words. So first of all, we have to start from the fact that the brain generates currents. You know, we have all these exchanges between neurons that are currents, they're firing currents between each other. And these currents, they generate also magnetic fields. These magnetic fields generated by the brain are very feeble, but they can be detected. They can be detected, for example, by a technique which is known as magnetoencephalography, which is a very trusted technique that has been used for years to see the brain's activity. And normally this kind of technique requires very big bulky systems like the ones you are looking at right now, which are used in hospitals. But Kernel would like to miniaturize basically these systems and make these systems available to users commercially. So here enter the magnetometers. Magnetometers, as the name implies, they are devices that measure magnetic fields. They can come in different shapes and they can work on different principles. Specifically about kernel flux, they rely on optically pumped magnetometers. It's very long, a very complex principle, very complex physical principle. Basically, there is a complex interaction between light, a gas, and the magnetic field generated by the brain. So these, basically, devices, they can detect this kind of interaction and based on that, they can see the brain's activity. So we can place several of these magnetometers around the head. So the brain's magnetic field, it can actually extend through the scalp in what we call lobes, which are the coral lobes that you're seeing in the picture. The magnetometers which are placed in these lows, they can sense these magnetic fields. The kernel flux system uses several hundreds, in fact around 360 magnetometers placed in different regions around the human head. In fact, these systems are organized in modules, so the user, for example, could eventually use a subset of modules of this whole system and measure the activity of specific parts of the brain to see, for example, specific kinds of brain tasks. Cool, cool. So now we just strap this thing, this weird helmet to our heads and we're done. We can read our thoughts. Well, not so fast. Because there is in fact a problem. Yeah, I know. The thing is that when we record magnetic fields, we can have some disturbances. For example, things like electronics, like our phones and computers, they can generate disturbances that can then affect the readings of these magnetometers. And to get good readings, we will need, for example, sealed and shielded rooms, like the one that we see in the kernel video. But this is not very optimal, in the words of a kernel employee. I hallucinated in there once, due to the sensory deprivation. That might be okay for studying the brain as an isolated organ, but we built Flux for something different. Which is why Kernel is working on a specific environment to get these readings, which is called the Labyrinth. The Labyrinth is the room that we see in this video. It has a less oppressive design than the sealed room before. It includes a short bent corridor that prevents magnetic fields from escaping from the room, thus improving the readings of the magnetometers. Its walls, the walls of this room, have also some included passive and active shielding and they can cancel external disturbances. The room itself is made to be comfortable, so the user can just sit down and can experience the kernel flux, let's say, experience and see his brain activity in real time. 
experience is the key word for this company, experience about what is going on inside our heads, to learn more also about our mental states, to learn more about our attention, our memory, our learning experiences. It is not exactly fully clear to me if Labyrinth is just a prototype that is being used at Kernel as a test facility, or if it's something that is actually going to be delivered together with the device as part of the Kernel Flux experience. We will learn more about that in the future, and we will learn also more about the device itself, the helmet itself. Because here's the thing, this device seems really bulky and looks a bit funny right now. Probably it will go through several design iterations to make it more aesthetically pleasant for the customer. But still, it's very nice to see different companies working on brain-computer interfaces in different ways, because Kernel has taken a different path with respect to Neuralink. It's not just about the invasive versus non-invasive solution, it's also about the fact that Kernel is focusing more on commercial applications and less on therapeutic applications. It's focusing more on learning about our brains and less on enhancing our brains. In any case, if you want to learn more about kernel flux and flow about the latest updates, you can check the presentations that I can put in the description. They go pretty in detail about the physical principles, but they're very interesting. So let me know in the comments what you think about kernel and this device and if you would actually want to use it. And if you want to learn more about brain computer interfaces and about kernel, I suggest you to subscribe to my channel and also to check the other video that I made about kernel. I thank you very much for watching and I see you next time.